All right, this class is going to be about 90 minutes long, so uh, if you have time, let's go ahead and sit through this. I know it's booked for two hours, so um, I appreciate you all coming. So let's get started. What is a command ship? Well, a command ship is a Tech 2 variant battlecruiser that's designed and upgraded to fulfill certain roles within fleet operations. Um, each one is a much more advanced ship than its battlecruiser counterpart. It's got a larger CPU, a larger pow power grid, and generally can fit more modules. Um, this advancement also uh, affects your defense. It gives you the Tech 2 defenses that uh, you, you enjoy with your Tech 2 ships without having to spend so much slottage. All right, for these aspects, though, you're expecting to pay more ISK, and I believe when I just checked the market, we're looking at 200 million ISK just to buy a Battlecruiser command ship hull. So if you need just the extra defense and want to pay 10 times its cost, go for it. Sometimes think about the cost, though. Battlecruisers can be much more effective because they're much cheaper. Um, just so you know, though, your ship, as it's designed, will change battlefield conditions. Some battlefield conditions will be changed on grid with the fighting itself. They'll be out there with bigger guns, more firepower, a heavier, beefier tank. Others change the, the entire combat, and they don't even have to be on grid. They simply have to be in the solar system. As long as you're fleeted up with them, I tell you right now, command ships will make a difference in fleet combat. Because of this, command ships have a tendency to be primaried in fleet fights, so... For all that money you just spent on a Tech 2 defense and a Tech 2 ship and all those rigs that you're going to put on it, I guarantee you, you're going to get locked down. And in my opinion, I would I would tackle, um, in priority of order, bubblers, command ships, logistics, simply because your logistics ships are, in, are boosted by about 50 to 60% effectivity simply by having a Tech 2 fitted vulture on the field. If you got a shield transporter out there, you know, they, they can be amazing, just Bear with me on this. I'll get to the math here shortly. All right. EVE University's wartime policy is uh, has to be noted simply because this is an EVE unit class. You are not allowed to use command ships at all um, unless you have spe specific permission from Silent Brick. And you're not going to get it. I asked for it. I've been flying them for four years, and he said no. So just letting you know. Um, the Office of Strategic Services is working up something for this. I know that it was mentioned in the kind of forgotten. It's still out there. They're still working the process. Bear with them. Command ships are part of their course of study, and I'll be assisting them in that. So let's get into why command ships are such a pain in the ass. I'll tell you right now, command ships require a very focused, intense skill set, combining the basic skill sets of the ship itself, the ship effective tank, Tech 2 weapons, and in the case of boosting command ships, the command links themselves too. Um, understand that a poorly uh, skilled pilot flying one of these ships has a life expectancy of about 6 seconds on the battlefield. You're not going to make any difference. You're going to be out there, you're going to be thinking you're flying this really big ship, you're going to get primary like I mentioned before, and they're going to melt you because you don't have a T2 tank, you don't have T2 weapons to defend yourself, and you're probably not boosting as effectively as you could. We're looking at 100 million ISK just in the skill books alone to get into this course. So, as I mentioned before, this is not a basic course of study. This is this is heavy, and we're not we're not talking about the simple skills like engineering, electronics, and energy management. Um, we're talking about having those at level five. Period. You have to be able to get everything jammed and crammed into your ship. And I'll, I have these at level five, and there are times that I still have to jam a fitting module onto my command ship just to get out of it what I need. Now, just having the money to buy and fly doesn't necessarily mean you have the skill to use. Um, as with all things in EVE, knowing how things work in EVE helps you fly this ship. You normally are going to be in a position of command. All right? You're not going to be sitting at the bottom of the, of the fleet tree boosting the fleet. You're going to be sitting in a fleet command position or wing command position, which means if things go ugly, if your fleet commander DCs, you're going to default become the fleet commander, and you're going to have to take that fleet out. So it's not just a matter of knowing how to fly the ship. You're also going to have to know how to move a fleet, how to get them moving, and I would highly recommend squadron command classes if you haven't already taken them. Learn how to do these things. Also, because of that, you're also going to need what other ships are out there against you. You're going to need to know, essentially, all of the ship types by name. If you don't know what a Thrasher is, if you don't know what an Onyx is, you need to learn these things right away. When you see a Force Recon ship jump in, you're going to need to know immediately by name what it is, what it can do, and its effectivity. These are critical. 
And we haven't even started talking about the basic skill sets for this yet. This is just an overview of what you're going to need to learn to fly this ship. All right, does anybody here think that any of these skills aren't required to fly a, a, a command ship effectively? Please go ahead and X up now. I'm going to assume that you all get it then. This is not a skill uh, plan for the faint of heart. And I'll tell you right now, I've got almost 25 million skill points tied up into command ships alone. And if you think it took me just a year or two to get that, you're wrong. It took me two and a half full years of training nonstop. Um, I wanted to fly command ships, and I enjoy it. All right, are there any questions on the basic overview of what we're going to cover today? Very good. All right, we're going to go ahead and start with skill trees, and I'm just going to define the basic skills. I'm not even going to, to mention the fact that you should probably train all of these to level 4, if not level 5, in order to do what you're doing. Um, the very first thing you're going to have to have to fly a command ship, and it doesn't matter which command ship you're flying, is Battle Cruisers 5. All right, Battle Cruisers 5 requires Spaceship Command 4. It requires uh, Racial Cruisers. Um, oh, Battle Cruisers doesn't. You're also going to need Warfare Link Specialist 4. How many of you have Leadership 5? X up, please. Okay, Leadership 5 is a prerequisite for Warfare Link Specialist. It's necessary. So if you're interested in flying command ships, now would be a good time to polish up your leadership skills a little, mainly because these are designed to fly in units. Uh, you're, you're, you're designed to be a squad commander at the very minimum. All right, Spaceship Command 5, you should all have that up to, the, up to that if you're flying any kind of Tech 2 ship. Um, if you're not, please make that a priority as well. All right, the second skill tree you're going to have is Racial Cruiser 5. So depending on whatever race of command ship you want to fly, that's what you're going to need. Racial Cruiser 5. How many of you have Racial Cruiser 5 in at least one race of cruisers? Congratulations, you're halfway there. Racial Cruiser 5 and Battle Cruisers 5 are probably the longest trains for any of this section. And these are just minimum. I haven't even started talking about what your command ship skill should be at. All right, now there's two different types of command ships. One of them is a fleet command ship which is designed to boost the fleet from anywhere in the solar system. The other one's a field command ship, which is designed to be on grid and hand out a pounding. All right, I like to talk about field command ships first because they sit on the field and they run the day. When you see a Nighthawk jump into an area, you know that they're going to be throwing heavy assault missiles at you, and you know they're going to be hitting you hard. All right, they all have their, their functional safeties and their functional weaknesses as well. We're going to discuss those a little bit later in detail. Now, if you want to fly these field command ships, you're going to have to have Heavy Assault Ships 4. So if you like flying hacks already, this is just a step in the right direction for you. Um, heavy Assault Ships 4, Weapon Upgrades 5, which I would recommend anyway, and assault and uh, Advanced Weapon Upgrades 4 is a recommendation, and Spaceship Command 5, as we mentioned before. If you want to fly Field Command Ships, the target tree for that is Logistics, and you have to have Logistics 4 in order to, to fly one of these ships now. The ship isn't designed to, lo to do logistics duties. It just requires a logistics background, understanding how you have to have long-range targeting, signature analysis. Those are critical functions for a command ship in this position. Um, I would go so far as to say that knowing logistics helps you fly a command ship better simply on the basis that you understand how damage is being dealt on the board. You know how to redirect fire. You know where to put your logistics if they're not paying attention. You know how to move your fleet around to make it more effective. It helps you be a better leader. Now, as I said, those skills are the absolute bare minimums. I highly recommend that you get your command ships at least to level 4. Right? I know command ships 5 is a 38-39 is a day skill. Don't train it unless you feel like you absolutely love sitting in these ships, uh, simply because it's a lot of time that you could be putting towards other things. 
Now, as we consider command ships, we have to consider how much skill it takes to fit them. Uh, we're looking at a guaranteed Tech 2 tank. We're looking at Tech 2 weapons. If you're using fleet command boosts, you're going to have to know how to use those as well. Um, through the leadership chain, you're going to want some kind of boosting in your leadership as well. So if you haven't got your armored warfare, your base warfare skills up to three at least, I would recommend you get them there as well. Boosting a fleet just by those numbers can change the dynamic of the battlefield. You'll notice when we set up EVE University fleets that the first thing we call for is leaders with capable command skills. Even we in the university recognize that there is a need for that extra 10% just across the board. It doesn't have to be boosted by a module. Just getting them alone can change the tide. Now, um, I can go into exact fittings for each ship, but it would take longer than I have time to teach this class. I would recommend that you go out to Fail Heap Challenge. I'd recommend that you go out to um, Battle Clinic. I don't like Battle Clinic, but you can go there. Um, you can even look at some of the fittings that I have. I have a few of my own um, that you can use to boost a fleet with or to fly out there and you know, kill people with. Depends on what you're up here for. Understand that you have to have the skills to use all of those modules. So um, let's be honest. If you haven't learned to fit a properly tech to uh, fitted battle cruiser, you uh, you better work on that long before you start looking into flying command ships. All right, other skills that I'd recommend you have: um, take whatever fitting you program uh, fitting program you have, EFT, PIFA, um, EVHQ, and just beat it to death. You're spending 200 million isk on a hull that you may or may not get to fly very well. All right, you're going to be in the university. It's not going to be something that you can do every day. If we're not at war, I'm sure you could feel free to go out and fly one. But if we're at war, you got to lock it up. Now, when you do that, I would recommend that you use your skills and do not use skills um, that's like an all level five. All right, make sure that they're using your skills. You want an ideal, optimum setting for your ship. You don't want to go out there with the expectation that your vulture can tank 1,300 DPS. Get out there and find out it can only tank six. That that would be very disappointing. So, skills that make the ship easier to fly, energy management 5, weapon upgrades 5, advanced weapon upgrades 4, 5 is preferred, command ships 4, wing command 3. You've already got leadership to 5, you might as well get wing command to 3. And electronics 5. All right, as, as I've mentioned, these ships are skill intense. We're talking a year and a half to two years just to get to the level 4 base minimum that I recommend to fly these ships. A lot of you have already come that far. I'm saying that some of you already fly logistic ships. Some of you already fly effectively hacks. Some of you do all of these things very well. So if you're ready to answer the call to command the fleet, um, strap in, prepare for it, and know that you're going to be training for a good long time. Any questions on the skills? All right, seeing no questions, I'm going to move right into field command ship. All right, field command ships are designed, as I mentioned before, to rule a battlefield. They're designed to have better guns, more guns, better hull, better resistances, and more slots to put stuff into. All right, the only downside you really get from flying this ship is you only get two rig slots. Hey, we, we can compensate for that a little bit somewhere in the middle. All right, we take these ships and um, we move forward. You, you put a, a group of field command ships in with a fleet command ship, and you're going to see some interesting mix going on. So let's talk about this. We get a ship that benefits from Battle Cruisers 5 automatically. So all command ships have a benefit for having Battle Cruisers 5. It'll say your Battle Cruiser still gives you 5% per level, when it really should just say your Battle, battle Cruiser skills are already maxed out. We're just going to give you a solid number. Well, it, it's even. It doesn't make sense that way. So we move forward. And then you take your command ship skill, all right, your four command ship skills. So you're getting a 20% or even a 40% based on what you're looking at for a bonus. And your bonus is coming right off your shield command, your spaceship command ship uh, skills. 
are functioning for you very effectively. Make sure you keep that in mind. Without those high skills, your ship is, you know, it's crippled. So add all that together, you get your bonuses for your defense, you get your bonuses from your offense, and field command ships just sit out there with all these bonuses coming from other ships, coming from yourself, coming from your skills, and it makes them brutal. I don't know if you've been out on the on a battlefield and seen an absolution tear people up, but I love to tear people up in an absolution. It, it's just flat fun for me. Um, we, we take advantage of fleet command ships bonuses, giving us exceptionally higher resists and, uh, and making us more maneuverable. Uh, just basically, they make us a house. So the upside to command ships is how direct it is. You like combat? This is the way to go. It's pretty straightforward. Point, um, F1, boom, and that's how it works. Um, everything must be T2 on these ships. All right, any questions on the overview of, uh, of field command ships? Because I'm going to go into each ship individually here in a moment. Okay. All right, as a, as a base, all field command ships can fit one command, one command link as a natural, but I'll tell you right now, since they're designed for combat, leave the command links to a more powerful authority on command links. Uh, the fleet command ships get a bonus to use them. Field command ships don't. You just have a slot. I recommend you put another gun in that slot because that's the way it should be. All right, we're going to move right into Amar command ships and... In my opinion, I, I like Amar command ships. It my, wasn't my first. It was my actually my second tier command ships. I liked the Caldera ones first, and I realized they just suck. Okay, so how does the Absolution work? Well, it's got seven high, three medium, seven low, two rig slots, six turrets, and a missile slot. You're never going to put a missile in there. Don't, don't fret. Just put bigger guns. Um, you're looking at six heavy pulse, later, pulse lasers, and... These things work amazingly if you have Logi support. Uh, if they're buffer tank to be best, and I've got one up to 320,000 effective hit points with just T2 modules. We're not talking, we're not, we're not talking the, the faction or the officer modules. We're just talking plain Jane off the market T2 modules. Um, with Logi support, they are amazing. All right. Shory brings up an interesting concept about um, absolutions. Um, Shory, what is your uh, what is your point on this? Oh very much. Very much. Okay, um, they are a heavy laser ship, they are an armor tank ship, so you definitely don't want to be trying to play the shield game with these, and they are a, well, for, for lack of a better term, they are a buffer or a, a, a passive sort of armor tank, which is why they work best with logistics. If you have to make it an active style ship, uh, do what you can to keep your, to keep your active on it. Um, you'll have to compensate for the uh, high amount of capacitor use for your lasers, but if you can compensate for that, these ships are, are tough. When you go out in fleets, try to get Logi support with these. Okay, next is the Calvary Nighthawk. And like I said earlier, I thought the ship was amazing. And it is for a purpose. Okay, its, it's fitting relay out is 7 high, 5 medium, 5 low, 2 rig, 6 missiles, and a turret. You'll never put a turret on there. Um, these are designed for T2 heavy missiles and heavy assault missiles. And you you want to get a close range ship. You get an afterburner. You get a you get a micro warp drive. Whatever you need to do, and you uh you hit them with hams, and it mutilates people. Of course, it's a missile boat. It's that's the drawback to it. Um, it's a missile boat. It's a shield tank, and it's a passive tank. It has the same kind of tank that a Drake does, which means for prolonged encounters, it's going to be amazing. 
But if you get Alpha Strike by 15 Abaddons at close range, you're you're going to melt. It's going to be pretty much liquid liquid Nighthawk. Um, I was in an encounter. I was out flying for uh, flying for E Everset Drop Bears, and we were out doing some some escalations out in low sec. And I was flying the Nighthawk, and my ship was saved for last because they knew they couldn't kill my ship without everybody firing on it. And they wanted to get ready of everybody else first. So I lost my Nighthawk in, in that last. Um, they didn't even offer me ransom. It was really, really dignified. I appreciate that. Um, I will tell you now, versus a Drake, it will be better defended at a, an equivalent DPS. But you're not going to get much more out of that. Uh, the downside, a Drake gets seven missile launchers. This only gets six. Um, many people consider Nighthawks to be... Nothing more than really expensive drakes, um, simply because a drake can fit uh, a little bit more gun on the top. They just can't get the natural damage bonus that a, a Nighthawk gets. Uh, Yulon makes a very good point. They are good mission ships. So if you're going to go fly one out in PvP, not, not a choice. But if you're going to go run level 4s, they'll solo most level 4 missions. Okay, next we're going to talk about the Galente Astarte. And I know a lot of people who love these ships because it's a drone uh, it's a drone boat with guns. And it's a command ship to boot. Uh, fitting layout, 7 high, 4 medium, 6 low, 2 uh, rigs, 7, seven turrets. Um, as with the last two ships, you lost a turret slot or a missile slot out of the high, out of the high slot fittings. With the Astarte, you actually get to keep it. That means you get an extra gun and you don't have to spend extra uh, damage mods to increase your damage. The power grid works for Heavy Blaster 2s. It's enough. It also works with a hybrid tank. Um, you can actually shield tank a Galente Start. You can try it if you'd like. It works pretty good for me, um, though they are designed for armor. Your bonuses come from armor. Um, they have buffer or active tanks, depending on which side of the, fi the fence you fit on. Um, I do know that I have seen one of these ships come out and do almost 900 DPS at exceptionally close range. They'll micro warp drive to you, they'll lock on, they'll scram, they'll jam, and then they will blast you into oblivion. It's kind of like a one-man shooting contest. Yes, uh, you'll have to play with the fitting tool to get it there. Those were with my numbers. Um, they could get a little higher. It is a smaller, faster, more expensive version of the Megatron. But I'll tell you, if you like that smaller, uh, that smaller signature radius that you get out of a battle cruiser, this might be for you. Um, it does require a little bit of logistical support for the higher end DPS. Otherwise, you're looking at five to six hundred. Um, still, six hundred DPS from a battle cruiser is wicked. I will tell you that right now, especially when it's as tanked as it is. The last ship we're going to talk about is the Minmatar Schleppner. Um, it has 8 high, 5 medium, 5 low, 2 rig slots, 7 turrets and 3 missiles. Don't ask me why, I didn't write it. Um, you can get 7 425 autocannons on that sucker. And a newt. That's what I use that extra high slot for. Um, you can use projectiles. That's what it's designed for, is to use the good Minmatar projectiles. It is an active shield tank. Um, it's great DPS with a tackle, and it's got cap-free weapons. And by many command ship pilots, including myself, it is the strongest command ship on the field. You cannot fight the amount of DPS and defense this ship has. You see one of these on the field, consider it a, a formidable opponent. If you see two, call it a call it a tag team wolf pack, if you will, because they're out there with the heat, and they will they'll focus on you. Are there any questions about any of the four ships I've discussed so far? Uh, 
Okay. Now that we've discussed the field command ships and the powerhouses they are, um, have I ever seen a rail a start? Yes, I have. Yes, I have, and they are an interesting tag team because it gives them more defense to put that that, that armor mod on there, and they they get more capa- more capacitor use out of it. Um, I I think they're they're kind of strange because I I never did like mixing mixing the two, but if you think you can make it work, uh, try it. Like I said, there are a lot of combinations out there that you can do with these. A rail of start can be effective simply because it's projectile and it can fight at range. Uh, however, um, the bonuses you get from the Astart don't help the rail, and that's that's basically the, the the downside. You're not taking advantage of the ship's natural capability to go out and, and smash. But yes, I have seen a rail of start work pretty well. As a general rule, you're going to find, with the exception of uh, some longer-range uh, Nighthawks, that these are short-range, high DPS, get in, close, and kill kind of ships. Um, they tend to fly pretty fast, and so they'll be either with an afterburner or they'll have a, a micro warp drive, so they'll move pretty quick, and they will hit very hard. If you're flying a small ship and one of these is closing on you, you got about that much time to get the hell out. Okay, so if field command ships are the sword, uh, any counters? Um, no, we're going to discuss that a little bit later. All right, like I said, if field command ships are the sword of the fleet, fleet command ships are the shield. Um, fleet command ships, unlike their field command counterparts, aren't meant to be deployed on the front line. They're not zero meter ships. They are. Uh, they're designed in, instead to be. Well, they can literally be off grid and do their job. Um, something that maintains the absolute farthest range they can. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean they shy away from combat, but their role is not at zero meters. Due to the command link modules that these these ships put on, um, they benefit from the additional support of one simply being in the solar system. Uh, they can be sitting at the sun while the fleet's doing their thing, and they could be sitting at a deep safe somewhere. Um, in system means in system. It doesn't matter where you are. Now, com- compared to their battle cruiser bases, these ships are offensively inferior. Um, they do support some of the strongest defenses, however, of any sub ship. Uh, I have taken a Vulture, which is the Caldari version, and I have taken it up against a, uh, a carrier, and that carrier could not down my shields. I was, at, I was at 58% the entire time. I had 10 fighters just wasting on me. And I had the signature radius of a battleship. So it wasn't like they weren't hitting, it was like they weren't hitting hard enough. These ships can be exceptionally defensive. Um, what their purpose is, instead of having all those guns, is that they have what's called command links. They come sometimes call them warfare links. And they, they are the prime purpose of this ship being out there. Um, this is where crazy, informa- uh, crazy leadership has to come into play. The field command ships don't need them because they're designed to kill people. Fleet command ships are designed to help them. If nothing else, you are doing nothing more than bolstering the defense of an entire fleet. Now, the four skills that you're going to absolutely need to have are the four leadership skills that boost armor, shields, uh, electronic warfare, and speed. Um, armored siege information and skirmish, respectively. And without these skills, trained to level five, you won't even be able to use the command links that are on board. Because each of these skills has a specialization. All right, let's, let's just take the, the Vulture, for example, which is my favorite fleet command ship. Um, it has shield bonuses that go to it. So let's take Siege Warfare. All right, that's what's going to be required to use it. Siege Warfare Specialist is a branch of that, but it requires you to have a level 5 training in Siege Warfare. So we're going to take a Siege Warfare Specialist skill.
and we're going to add to it what its effectiveness is with it. Now, my favorite is the shield harmonization mind, uh, shield harmonization command link, and its function. And there are twelve varieties of com- of combat com- uh, boosting functions. Thank you, Stone Cutting. Um, you can see here that for every level you have, it gives you a two percent bonus to uh, shield resistances. Uh, what I really like about these is they don't work against the stack penalty. They work before it. All of these boosts coming from all these links work before the stack penalty. Um, it's kind of an awesome thing. So just to save you, we're going to do a little bit of math on command boosting a little bit later. But understand that with just one of these on my vulture, I can boost the effective resistance of the fleet more than an invulnerability 2 module can, and you didn't have to fit it. Keep that in mind. So, with these command links that are designed to boost particular aspects, like I said, the Caldari are really good at shields, Amar are good at armor, uh, Galente are good for electronic warfare, and Minmatar are designed for, for propulsion and speed. Uh, that includes stopping and increasing speed as well. Um, you want to choose the specialization that goes with the ship you intend to fly. Mainly because if you look at these ships, they're designed to boost a particular focus of uh, warfare links. Um, take the Caldari, their shields, Amars for armor. Uh, you know, keep that in mind when you choose which ship you intend to fly. If you're an overachiever and you decide to, you can take your specialization all the way to level 5. Um, this may in and of itself, it unlocks two things. The first thing it unlocks is the Tech 2 variant of your Shield Warfare Link, or your Warfare Link in general. Uh, the Tech 2 version of it is slightly better. Now you'll notice that between the Siege Warfare Shield Harmonizing 1 and 2, the difference is only 0.5. Alright, that might not seem like a whole grand great amount of deal, but let me tell you a secret. When you get done adding 125% times 125% times 150% times uh, 500% times 125%, and then you add another another uh, 25% to that, it gets insane. So doing the math, uh, which we'll do a little later, you can see where training this to level 5 makes you a very effective part of a fleet. All right, so now that you've chosen your specialization, and now that we've determined that you can use the Tech 2 links, so, uh, Victor brought up the most important concept of all, and that is the Mind Link. The Mind Link is a slot 10 implant, and you can only have one of these slot 10 implants in your head that boosts your effectiveness by an additional 50%, or in multiple terms, 500%, or 150% better. 150% more effective is not bad. Um, especially when you think that if you just have the module, you're only doing 10%, or 12.5 if you have the good one. Um, add another 50% to that. You can go 15 to 18, 75%, which is not bad. On top of that, we can add another bonus, which is Warfare Link Specialist 5. You already have it at 4. You have to have it at 4. It's part of flying the ship. So at this point... Um, the extra 10% that you add in there is now 40% more effective. It The, the math is huge. Um, I'll break out the math here in a minute. I'll kind of draw it out on a little blackboard. There are amazing skills to learn. When you start doing the math and start adding these up, you can get an effective shield boosting of just over 31% um, shield, uh, resistance bonus. And vulnerability fills, last I checked, only do 30 Okay, all the skills that boost the warfare links, um, what we're looking at is, uh, let's just say shields for now. Um, The shields that boost the warfare links, the first one is uh, Siege Warfare Specialist. Okay, that's the base skill. You have to have it just to to fit the link. The second skill is going to be Warfare Link Specialist. 
The third skill, and it's you know you don't realize it until you look at it, for fleet command ships is command ships. Command ships will give you a three percent boot bonus per skill level. So now we're adding even more. The fourth skill is cybernetics. You have to have cybernetics trained to five. All right, that's a must. The cybernetics five is required to put that slot ten command link in your head. All, all of those skills increase the ability of your command links. So, keep in mind, that's what you're going to need. Yeah, those are the only four skills that will actually do anything. Now, there's other skills that go with it. I mean, you can get your wing command up, you can get your fleet command up. Those skills allow you to boost more people, but as far as the actual bonuses from the links themselves, that's it. Just those four skills. doesn't seem like much until you look at the prerequisites for them and realize that they're, they're not simple. Um, V-Frame, you need to add to the list... Um, yeah, yeah, mind link is cybernetics. I, yeah, that's it. You got it. Okay, so let's talk about each of these ships. And we'll talk about the uh, the Amar, since it's alphabetically first on the list. The Amar is always seem to go first. Um, we're going to talk about the damnation. All right? I love that word. It's a cool word. It means that when we come and I got my damnation, you're going to hell. And that's kind of what we'd send people to do. So we're looking at our fitting. We got seven high slots. Four medium, six low, two rig slots. Now, here's your offensive nerfing. Five missiles and four turrets. And wouldn't you know it, this ship is designed to shoot missiles, not turrets. It's an Amar ship that shoots missiles. It actually gets a bonus to missile velocity. Um, a damnation can be scary in and of itself, but if somebody tries to intercept it and they're flying around about 3,000 a second, you can actually shoot them down with your missiles simply because your missiles fly faster than they do. Hey, blasphemy or not, they shoot down interceptors. They shoot down fast drones. Um, I would use these as point defense on sleeper missions because I could shoot down them smaller targets faster than the other guys could. It's what I did with it. And I boosted the fleet, clearly. You only get four missile turrets if you have all three command links fitted to your ship. But, you know, you know you're a boosting ship, you're not a gun. So, it's focus, armor defense. It's a missile ship with an active armor tank. Um, sometimes you can use a buffer armor tank if you've got enough logistics out there supporting you. Um, I use heavy, uh, I use heavy missiles. Um, hams get good range, but they take up too much power grid, um, and take it away from the command links, especially if you're using the Tech 2 variety. Alright, second is the Caldari Vulture. Um, the Vulture is pretty, it's, it's, it's my favorite of all four of the fleet ships, simply because I could get it just insanely tough. Um, seven high, six medium, four low, two rig slots, five missiles, five turrets. It's a turret boat. Um, it's a Caldera ship that uses guns against an Amar ship that uses missiles. Let's let's think about that for a second. Okay. Um, the focus for this is clearly shield defense. They are out there to boost shields to the entire fleet, which is great for EVE University fleets because a lot of people are out there flying their ECM boats. They're out there flying their their ships. Um, I will throw up some fittings after class. I don't like to include them as part of the class, uh, simply because then it becomes a debate on whether my fit's better than your fit, and I don't like to get into that. All right, and they are a passive tank. They, Like I said, I can sport a 1,000 DPS passive tank on that ship. Um, even a couple of Abaddons would have a hard time alpha striking my, my, cal my Vulture down simply because it will absorb a thousand damage. It's got such insane resistances.
All right, now we're going to talk about the Eos. It's a Galente ship. It's ugly. Um, I don't care. It's, it's a good ship. Um, it's designed seven high, four medium, six low, two turret, uh, two rigs, five turrets. You'll only use four. Um, and its focus is electronic warfare. Um, just thinking about it, they got drones. Drones. All right, they got guns. Guns. They focus on your ability to jam the other targets, which means our university fleets go out and they're like 35 blackbirds in the, in the fleet and they're all just like super jamming. What kind of E-War? All E-War. All E-War. It focuses on all forms, the, regardless of race. It's more, it's a, a much better bonus for ECM, um, and I believe sensor jamming, but it does focus on target painting and, uh, and the rest. So, um, let's look at that. It's, that's the design. Yes, yes, welcome to the E-War. For those of you who fly in EVE University and know that we like to go heavy E-War, this ship is like a wet dream for the E-War pilots because you're boosting them in a way that they cannot fathom. You're just pushing them beyond their norm. Range, effectivity, uh, ability to target, you're just making them thick. All right. Two of these links increase E-War effectivity, one by range, one by strength. The third one increases your own signature radiuses, or not signature radius, but your own electronic signatures, making it much harder to be jammed. So not only are you jamming better, you're getting jammed less. Um, fleet versus fleet, a, a well-trained EOS pilot will, will take a, a, a jamming fleet against a jamming fleet and win. And you can't jam an EOS. I mean, you can, but it doesn't do any good. Command links don't target. So you can hit that EOS with all the jamming you want to. Command links don't target anything. You turn them on and they just broadcast. That's all they do. It's all like a sensor booster. Okay. Um, we'll talk about how we fit command links here, uh, warfare links in a moment, because they can only be fit to several different ships. All right, last we're going to talk about is the Claymore. Um, the Claymore is probably the most offensive of the fleet command ships, and I don't recommend you be offensive with it. Um, we're looking at eight high, six medium, four low, two rigs, five turrets, or three missiles. Its focus is tackle and intercept. So for those of you who like to, to fly around in your Dremiel that can point someone at 48k, this will make it so you can point them at like, I don't know, it's, it's huge, it's ridiculous. Um, a Dremiel normally, I think, can point at like 33 uh, with all of its bonuses and a good faction point. Uh, this increases it by another, I want to say 25 to 30%. So we're looking at almost 50k pointing. Uh, you know, like the sleepers do. They point you at 50k. It's kind of ridiculous. Um, like I said, their, their, their focus is tackle intercept, which means that you can make your propulsion modules better, or you can make their propulsion, mo uh, or your propulsion jamming modules better. Whichever one you want to do. And you can make your afterburners and micro warp drives more effective. For those of you who like to fly fast, get the tackle in, this is the ship for you. Any questions on the fleet command ships for right now? Yeah, and as Victor said, you can go off off grid. All right, Stone Cunning asks how a typical engagement looks like in a command ship. All right, are we talking fleet or field command? I'm assuming we're talking fleet command since that's what we're on right now. Okay. Um, in a fleet command ship, if I have to do, do anything with an engagement, I will do it at roughly 200k. Uh, 200k gives me just enough distance to see what's going on and just enough time to see if anything's coming after me. Um, you don't want to be by yourself out in the middle of a deep safe. I don't recommend it because if something does come up on you, it's too late. You're already being jammed unless you're already aligned. And here's the downside. You're, while you are in, while you are in warp, you can't broadcast boosts. 
So the last thing you want to do is stay, spend a lot of time in warp. Um, if you have to, use uh, warp points on, on the grid if there's warp points to go to. Otherwise, try to sit back and try not to get uh, tackled. Um, yes, you're going to last a long time. Yes, it's going to be a matter of, of time. But I have seen a fleet go after. Um, they're in the middle of an engagement, all doing the whole in the middle fighting thing. I've seen a tackler go out, tackle a command ship, and the whole fleet just warp to that command ship and decimate it. Um, like I said, Holy, you, what you're looking at is every time you warp, your boosts turn off. So while you're in warp, you're not boosting anything. Um, you're boosting your regular uh, warfare s skills. That's it. Um, your links are offline. So until you land and get settled back into space... All right. Yeah, it, w it would be kind of crazy. I do understand that these command ships tend to have a, a moderate-ranged uh, sensor strength, which means that they're a little harder to find than most normal ships, but um, unless you're flying the... the, the the EOS, which will help increase your your uh, sensor strength, what you're looking at is, well, you're looking at getting scanned down in about 25 to 30 seconds. All right, so why not fleet in with Lodgies? Oh, no, I, I recommend that you fleet with Lodgies. I recommend you fleet with Lodgies every chance you get. Simply because um, armor and shield boosts, one of them is designed for resistances, two of them are designed for repair modules. And those, uh, those second two affect remote repair modules as well. Um, if you're in the same mission pocket inside the solar system, yes, you're in the same solar system. Oh, I know. I know. But you have the ability to warp in, especially if you see a ship coming your way. It gives you plenty of time. I mean, even a ship that flies five, uh, 5K a second, that still buys you a good 40 seconds of time to know that ship's on their way to get you. All you have to do is align and warp. Get in the, get in the group if you have to. I haven't got to tech threes yet. I've still done the list. Just want to make sure we get these these questions out of the way. I like to get the the, the basis stuff because everything after this is kind of a, a variations on a theme, so to speak. All right. Now, early somebody asked a question about what ships can fit these command links. Now, a battle cruiser can fit one. Actually, they can fit more than one. They get a, a reduction for use on a battle cruiser. Um, Command ships can fit them, and most capital ships can fit them. Dreadnoughts don't. The rest of them will. Uh, you can fit one on a carrier. You can fit one on a, a Titan, on a, a mothership. You can fit them on all of those. Understand, though, if you try to fit it to anything else, unless you've done some exceptional power grid management and uh, CPU management, you're never going to get one on board. Considering it takes 5,000 CPU to fit, 5,000. 
But if the ship doesn't give you a 99% reduction to that command link, you're not getting it on. Um, a roar call can fit them. I will tell you right now that it's not. I wouldn't. I wouldn't call it a an effective ship to fit them. But yes, it can in technicality fit them. Um, so can the orca. Um, like I said, it's a can thing. I wouldn't go so far as to call it a must thing. Uh, any other questions before we move on? Yeah, the Orca is technically a command ship, and I'm gonna I'm gonna touch on it very briefly here in a minute. Okay. And since we're there, we'll go ahead and just start touching on that. All right, the Orca and the Rorquar are both mining ships, by definition. Um, but they are all also capable of fitting command modules. That's what they do. Um, an Orca is designed to be out there with, well, tractor beams technically sucking up cans and moving them off. But uh, it, it, it gets a good bonus for those. But it can fit mining links, and it does get a 3% bonus to mining link up uh, links fit to it. Now, I mean, doing the math, you can fit a lot of extra stuff on an Orca. You've got three mining, li- or three mining links fit to an Orca, you're increasing your range by 50%, you're increasing your mining ability by about 28%, and you're increasing your um, capacitor use by 28%. Not a bad deal uh, for Orca. It's even better in a Rorqual, but if you deploy a Rorqual to an area that it can be shot at, it's your risk. It's only a 2.4 billion isk ship that you're hanging out in the middle of a combat zone simply because you felt like it. Um, nobody does the third link for anything, as far as I've found, v frame That's, uh, I don't know, I think it's probably the least, least used link of all links. Yeah, um, they don't need that crap. They're really effective already. Uh, yeah, that's what you can fit the tractor beam on there to suck up cans. That's why it's it's not bad. Um, as for the roar call, you're gonna probably spend most of your high slots in other things. Um, you know, a big tractor beam, since it can use a cap tractor beam. Um, I don't know why you'd ever use it. I'd never deployed one outside of a POS. Okay. Um, but they're both technically considered command-level ships. Uh, I don't like to talk about them a whole lot. Uh, most people use the Roca for a big hauler anyway, and the Roquall is just so bloody expensive, it's a cap that you can't put anywhere. No, a uh, is a capital ship in every definition. You can't even make them in high sec. Um, it's designed for low sec operation. And null sec operations. The only time I ever saw one 
outside of a pass bubbles when we were jumping it out to a, a safe spot. Okay. All right, now that everybody's satisfied, let's go ahead and move on to Tech 3 stuff. All right, the first thing we're going to talk about is uh, stuff outside of the university. I've talked about everything that we can use while we're in the university and not even at wartime. Um, if you use it during wartime, you're going to get in a lot of trouble. So let's talk about the stuff that can really get you in trouble. All right, the very first thing, um, I have to give you a disclaimer. Using the following fittings, rigs, implants, and chips during wartime can get you in serious trouble, even expelled from the university. You have hereby been warned. So, now with the warning out of the way, let's talk about a few techniques and tricks. Let's talk about POS boosting. Okay, if, if all of were to ever come under fire, I would go to Keldum and say, I'll be, I'm going to be at the POS until you log me off or kick me out. Which is kind of funny, because, you know, he's probably going to kick me out after I get finished. But I'll be sitting out there in a vulture. I'll be sitting out there in a vulture with seven command links, doing nothing but boosting an entire fleet inside of Aldrat. Sure, that's the only purpose I'm serving. Uh, I do know that when I lived in a wormhole, I spent about 21 hours a day logged in, boosting the entire system. And why? Because it's fun to do that. Right? I feel like I'm doing something, and I don't even have to be at the computer to do it. It's... It's an, upside, it's an upside. So, uh, you take all that command boosting ability, and you sit at a POS, and you can boost the entire the entire solar system. Uh, best to have an open fleet that people can come and go in. I know it's against the university to do that, uh, but, you know, you do what you can. Um, like I said, the, the links you use while you're POS boosting are based on your needs, whether you need more ship uh, defense, whether you need more speed, better jamming, um, let's say you got a maze in your area, you know, out in zero zero, it's kind of big. Or you got a mining contingency going out there, you throw your mining links on board. Um, if you're trying to hold up three gate camps at one time, you need to get your interdiction maneuvers out there. Stuff like that. All right, it's based on need. Now, Victor's favorite, strategic cruisers. All right, strategic cruisers are also the, the T3 cruisers, um, are essentially the adaptable ship of Eve. You can basically put them out. Now, when they were originally released, I thought to myself, how unspectacular. No command links. And I did, I said that. When they originally came out, there was no function to put a command link on a T3 cruiser. So I put zero stock in them. I thought they were the absolute worst thing in the world. And then, all of a sudden, they went and released a fourth module for each subsystem. And wouldn't you know it, the warfare processor defense subsystem available for all four T3 ships, um, made me reconsider my command ship strategy altogether. Um, I played on EFT for hours before I realized that um, they're inferior to fleet command ships only um, in they can fit one command link, um, unless you add command processors. Now, um, one command link can be enough, especially if it's the right one. Uh, what I did find, however, is that they get a much better skill bonus boosting rating, because if you have your defensive subsystems to level 5, where your command ships is at level 5, and it took you 27, 29, 40 days to get there, you're only getting 15%. Um, with defensive subsystems, it takes you about a day and a half, and you're giving 15%, and you still have two levels to go. Um, they'll, they'll push 25% bonuses on top of everything you're already trained to do. Um, I will tell you right now, though, they are not cheaper. All right, I talked about the exorbitant expense of a command ship in the beginning. Let's talk about the exorbitant expense of a strategic cruiser um, boosting a fleet instead. Um, in most situations, I will, however, argue that um, a, a T3 ship is not worth the expense of being a boosting ship. We'll tell you that they do it better and that they can boost from a POS much better, uh, simply because they can give better links and they're completely defensive. Uh, no attack, nothing else. 
Um, but in most situations, a fleet command ship will outperform a, uh, a, a well-fitted T3 ship any day of the week, simply because a fleet command ship can fit three command links, uh, where a strategic cruiser can't. A command ship can fit three. Um, and a command ship will sport a much bigger defense than your strategic cruiser. Uh, Victor, I'm sure that you were uh, looking to a, a better answer than that. Um, yes, I'll give a nod to the T3's ability to boost better. But if that extra 10% uh, makes or breaks a fleet, the fleet was going to break regardless. Harder to get a command ship? No, no, I, I can make them. Oh, right, no, skill-wise, absolutely. Um, the skill benefit to ratio, yes, you can fly a strategic cruiser faster, but what we're looking at here is long-term associates who've had two and a half years to plan probably have enough ISK to, uh, to afford a command ship where someone who shortcuts the skills to fly a T3 may not be able to afford the T3 they fly. And let's be honest, if you're flying a T3, why, why are you flying it not faction fit? Speaking of faction fitting, all right, here's where we start to step outside the box a lot, all right? Um, uh, I can try. I don't have a good Loki booster fit. I'll see if I can throw you one together on, uh, on my fitting tool. Now, let's talk about faction fitting. Um, as I mentioned before, they often get primaried, and competent FCs don't ignore the obvious vulture that's boosting the nano-fit Drake that's pounding on your face, all right? They don't. Um, they send the fleet at you, especially if you're that vulture pilot. All right. Um, so what do you do? You, you put more ISK into your already expensive ship and make it tougher. All right, faction fittings within the realm of, of uh, I don't know, capability, reasonability. I, w I wouldn't wouldn't dare put officer fittings on a on a battle on a battleship or a battle cruiser. I mean, just no point. But faction fitting, not a bad deal. You could take your 200 million ISK ship and you could add another 200 million ISK to it. So, uh, you know, what are faction fits? Uh, they are easier to fit. Not necessarily cheaper on the wallet, but cheaper hour grade, cheaper on the, uh, the CPU that are usually more than their T2 variety. I say usually because I mean usually. Check your fitting tool and make sure that you are actually getting more out of your money. Okay. Next, we're going to talk about Tech 2 rigging. And medium Tech 2 rigs are expensive, um, usually more so than the faction fittings. Um, Command ships are a bit cheaper on the rig department simply because instead of having to buy three, you really only have to buy two. Um, so if you're considering doing the, the, the Tech 2 rigs, um, they do make your ship tougher, and I would recommend doing a lot of fitting tool math before you jump to that conclusion, and simply because of the cost. Right? Like I said, when we step outside the box for EVE University, we're stepping out, because I haven't even got to the fun part yet. Because we're going to talk about faction implants. All right, how many of you have a set of faction implants in your head? X up. Oh, any one of your heads, like a jump cloud somewhere. Not that you fly it around normally. Yeah, snakes are expensive, um, but if you're flying a uh, and and I uh, and I have flown a uh, a damnation or an absolution even the slave set in your head makes your ship just unreal. I've seen a fit where someone had well over five hundred thousand effective hit points. It was dumb. 
So if you want dumb, you can do dumb. Um, and of course, after faction implants in Costco, the officer fits. And if you want to put a billion isk module on your command ship, please let me know. I would love to have a million a billion isk module just laying around in my cargo bay somewhere. You can just give it to me instead of losing it. That'd be great. Okay. I've reached the end of my notes, and as I've reached the end of my notes, I am going to go ahead and open up the class to you, the uh, the students. Now, since there's only seven or eight of us here, um, I would recommend that we uh, that we keep it in chat. If we need to talk over mumble, please keep it very brief. Wow, we got big. I know that when I X'd up, I only had eight people X up. That's amazing. Holy buckets. Hi, everybody. Um, can I get everybody to X up again, please? Everybody, whole class. I like our roster. Hey, Victor, you only count once when you accept me. Okay, fits. Oh, okay. Um, let me jump clone back to Aldrat. Since I seem to have left my jump clone in the incursion. Um, if anybody has any command ship fits they'd like to go ahead and post, go ahead and do that. Um, we can kind of talk about it now that we've got to discuss the contents of the class. I did want to say when you commented earlier about the Vulture being able to tank a thousand DPS, um, that would apply after the Nutsoid resists. So it actually shrugs off more than a, you know more than that. Oh yeah, oh yeah. A well-fit Vulture will just hold up an entire combat. Um, you have to send a fleet at it to break it. All right, now, Vframe, you ask about what I mentioned about implants on snakes and officer. Um, basically, my advice on that is if you're intended to fly a command ship, those particular things, uh, snake implants, slave implants, officer uh, uh, modules, way overpriced for the effect you get out of your ship, um, even as a command ship pilot. We're, we're looking at those modules if you're boosting a fleet from a carrier or maybe even a Titan, which doesn't make sense, but you can. Um, that would be the best place for those. Um, not so much on a on a command ship. <laughs> Very good, Victor. You you managed to find a pos boosting claymore. Um, the fit I'm looking at here um, on the Eve University kill feed that Astral posted um, is one of those um, one of those officer fit things I was talking about earlier. Um, when you're looking at 575 million isk for just a shield booster, um, and this ship got 
wasted in Hagler by an Eve University fleet. I hope the university is spending the money well, by the way, for what they got. Um, because they dropped a billion iskies. And like I said, Garris, they, like, they aren't great, uh, as far as rail starts. They're, they're there. They exist. I've seen one. I haven't seen one very well. Yeah, I bet it did. I bet it did. With a billion isk dropping, you could replace quite a few ships. Um, scroll up a little bit, Victor. You'll you'll find it up near the you know, about page and a half on this chat. So yeah, that, that I would classify that to be probably very well weapon fitted, but not very well defensively fitted for what they got out of it. Um, it looks like with as many people as were there, it probably took them about yeah, about thirty five forty seconds to reduce this guy to nothing. It looked like he also got uh, pwned by his own guy with a target painter. How about that? A blaster vulture. Um, I've never really fired a whole lot of weaponry out of my vulture, uh, simply because I try not to ever get that close. But I do remember when we were back in the uh, Corsiki days, Ubercado undocked his... Uh, is Ibis, and just let his fighters loose on me. It was a good day. I have to sum it up from some fits. I reinstalled my computer, so I lost a lot of my bookmarks or my uh, my installed fits off of my e uh, my EFT. All right, so does anybody want to tell a command ship story that they've got, something that they've seen or something that they've heard? X up if you got a really good story. Nobody's got a really good command ship story? No way. All right, I've got a really good command ship story. It's an orca story, so bear with me on this. All right, I uh, we we had just left Eve University and started Everset Drop Bears, and it was our first idea to go out to uh, to zero zero, and we got invited to go out to Pure Blind and live out there for a while. Of course, me being the naive command ship pilot, I hadn't done my homework on where I was going and decided that I would take a uh, an orca through uh, Tornos into C EC eight PR. Now for those of you who know that particular uh, that particular gate, 
know that it's camped 23 hours a day. Okay, 23 hours a day this thing is camped by Reds that are just there for the, for the lols and the kills, sure. Well, here's how the story goes. I'm sitting at the gate, I'm hovering at the gate, and I ask in uh, basically the gate intel channel if the gate is, if the gate is clear. And they say, yes, the gate is clear. And I'm like, all right, how's the system? Is the system clear? And the response I got was, system, one orange in system. Okay, so one person can't tackle my my double uh, warp stab fit orca unless they're running a double warp prop. And I have a slingshot that I can get me out in the warp in about 14 seconds. I'm okay with that. Well, um, not thinking clearly, I... Push the jump button. And when I got into system, I saw one orange and 27 reds. Somebody forgot to mention that there were 27 reds in system. Guess where they all were, by the way. Yeah, exactly. So here I am, sitting in my orca. Now, my orca is not just fit. It's full. I've got the entire uh, corporate hangar full of stuff that I'm packing out there. I've got my entire ship uh, ship hangar full of ships that I'm bringing out there. And, uh, of course, the first thing I see it is that I'm surrounded by assholes, okay, for lack of a better word. And I decide to, at that point, think about what I'm going to do. Now, I have a choice. I can throw on the afterburner and then hit the cloaking device and try to cloak out before someone rams into me and decloaks me. Okay? I knew my life expectancy there was zero. They had four Dramils orbiting where I had just jumped in. They were waiting for me. So I'm thinking, all right, best opportunity, haul ass back to uh haul ass back to the gate and try to jump back through. Um my first option, I tried to warp off. And just as I was getting ready to hit the warp threshold, I'm I'm double tackled. Um, I thought one tackle would have been enough. They got me with two, and I was stuck. So I turned around and started hauling ass back for the gate. And, of course, they got me quadruple webbed. I'm sitting there just chugging along at about one and a half meters a second. It's an orca, after all. It goes really fast. And, of course, here comes the fleet. Warps right on top of me. So I'm thinking, all right, what are we going to do now? I get about 7,000 meters from the gate, and I'm starting to get into about halfway through armor now. And I'm thinking, oh, what am I going to do now? I look in my cargo bay and I'm like, okay, let's try this. I kick out my strategic cruiser, I board my strategic cruiser, and I burn to the gate. While my orca disintegrates behind me. Um, in that, I lost, um, I lost a damnation... I lost three stealth bombers, a Covops, a logistics ship, the Orca, clearly, um, all of my subsystems except for what was on my Loki, um, and uh, all in all, I think it, it, it balanced out about 1.4 billion that I lost, and I saved my strategic cruiser. Did what drop any of my stuff? I wasn't going back to get it. I got back through on the other side of Tor and I was sitting in my strategic cruiser um, with uh, probably the most shaking my hands have done in a good long time. Oh no, I didn't lose my pod. I got out in my strategic cruiser. So yeah, I, I saved my, my entire set of plus four implants, um, my entire set of uh, tier two upgrade implants, I'm a, a mind link, and a little bit of notoriety because um, they had never seen that before, somebody kick out a ship and fly off in it. Um, so that's an interesting command ship story. Uh, yes, I lost the command ship in the process. I felt pretty bad about it. 1.3 uh, billion isk is not something to shrug off. 
After that, I decided that I would never go to Toronos or ECP8R ever again, and to this day, I've never been back. Yeah, we could call it the D maneuver, the Desiris maneuver. That'd be interesting. Um, I do know that I uh, I finally did get enough ISK to replace my Orca, which I swore um, my life would suck until I did, and it did. It was pretty much a downhill fight after that. I lost ship after ship after ship. I'd made no ISK. I couldn't get out there and do anything. Um, my marketing skills went downhill. Everything seemed to turn sideways until I went and bought myself a new Orca. And I called it Redemption. Oh, and yes, I did learn my, uh, my, my lesson about Intel. Um, Intel is uh, trust but verify. And, of course, I went and named my, uh, my Orca Redemption for the fact that I was an idiot and lost it. Anyway, I'm running out of things to talk about, and I think I've blasted through my, my information a little faster than I expected. Um, so if anybody has any questions, comments, concerns, uh, please let me know. If you have any gripes, bitches, or complaints, please send them to me by email, um, not in public channel. Um, I would prefer that. Um, otherwise, I will respond in kind in public to you. You don't want that. You smell bad. Thanks. Um, I'm actually going to take a shower as soon as I get done here. Um, I do appreciate all of you turning out for this class. I, uh, when I started the class at 1700, there were eight people in channel. And now it looks like there are a lot more than eight people in channel. I'm looking at about 30. So I do appreciate all of you all for your support. Um, and if you do intend to fly command ships in the future, I would recommend one thing. Skill up. Make that isk. Um, get used to flying ships in a different manner than you're used to. Um, if you like to kill people, use the field command. If you don't, use the fleet command. If you love to just help people and give your own time away, that's fine. Uh, question, do I own a carrier class? I do not own a carrier class. I actually steal one from Steve Fire. Um, um, I steal that one from him, so that's that's fine. Oh yes, uh, sometimes I do. Uh, not lately, but I do. Um, my, I, I can do that. Oh, I, I'm good for theory. I'm not necessarily good for uh, for practical application. I can teach a Titan class if you'd like. Never flown one. Um, if uh, you want me to give you some information on flying a, a capital ship, rule number one, you don't fly it while you're in the university. Uh, rule number two, if you don't have Tech 2, uh, tech two uh, defenses with capital size stuff. Um, rule number three, make sure that your shield defenses are at four, your armor defenses are at four, your hull defenses are at four. Make sure, no, Number four, make sure logistics skills are really, really good. Um, number five, don't undock it unless you can't afford to lose it. And if you're flying it, uh, you probably should be doing it in a large fleet. And they make really good buses to shuttle stuff back and forth. That's about all I got. Yeah, I missed uh, almost all the class. I just come here. Could you just quickly go over the difference between fleet and uh, field command? Oh, yeah, I can briefly go back over it. Like I said, uh, uh, fleet command ships are designed to boost fleets. 
uh, make them more defensively structurally capable. Uh, they can do it from anywhere in a solar system, boost an entire fleet that's in the solar system, as long as the fleet's properly set up, um, and EVE University's method is perfect. Uh, field command ships are more designed to throw out a beating and take one in turn. Um, they are combat powerhouses and are effective at zero meters. That's what they're designed to do. Um, each race has an independent ship that is good for a particular function or course. Um, take a look at each ship as you go shopping for them. I would recommend that you do your homework before you even start making a skill plan. Uh, get a good fitting out for a ship and then hit a skill plan that will make it work. Those ships are about 150 million, right? Uh, some can go as high as 200, yes. Um, do you think there's much use for them in all? Um, I, I would say that as a command ship pilot myself, if you are in a, uh, a large-scale fleet environment, you have to have one. Uh, the enemy will most likely be using them. You have to have them as well. If you're in a, a moderate size, like an EVE University Rome, um, I say they have their effectivity. Uh, you're going to be primaried by anything that's out there, but most people shy away from your 40 and 50 numbers. You don't really have to worry about it too much. Um, in smaller engagements, like 10-man squads, if you're not running a whole bunch of these, um, one may not be as effective as, say, five or six. So basically you're saying that they're more useful in large fleets and with multiples of them. Oh, exactly. Um, more is better. More is better, especially with fleet command ships. Um, there, is the, there is a restriction with uh, fleet command ships in general, though. Um, whoever has the highest bonus in the hierarchy tree is going to be the person giving the bonuses. If I'm boosting shields and the wing commander's boosting shields and the fleet commander's boosting shields, only one of our bonuses is going to come through. And that's the person with the highest bonus per, uh, per module. Um, which is why when you set up a fleet, it's best to set up a fleet with your defensive modules in the highest fleet positions and your, uh, more specialized things like your e-warfare and your tackle down in the lower areas. Um, let's think about a, a tackle squad, if we have one. Squad goes out and literally does just the tackling. They would be best served by having a command ship as their, as their squadron commander, where they might benefit more from having, um, an armored warfare in, in, in wing and a shield booster in fleet. It does help a lot across the board, but you gotta know a good way to stagger that out. That's part of the fleet command training. So the Amara ones are one of the best ones, right? Because I'm mostly an Amara pilot. Um, as far as... Um, that That's good for armor boosting. If you're flying in an armor fleet, that would be ideal. But you're not going to get a whole lot of love in a shield fleet with an armor boosting uh, command ship. So the main difference is that the, the field command ship doesn't boost, but it's meant to be... It's meant to hit people while taking a beating way. Correct. Um, that's that, that's absolutely right. The field command ship is is it's got that tech two tank and it's got usually another slot for defense and it gets bonuses from your ship command skills as well. It is designed to take a beating while it gives out one. Yes. Mm hmm. What are your thoughts about? A ship like that being able to stand a primary in OO. I think the command ships are second on the list of being primaried in zero zero. Um, I'll tell you that bubblers tend to usually get first draft simply because they're they restrict micro warp well, not micro warp drive, but people warping yeah, in annoying. to assist. Yeah. Um, especially if they pop a bubble up, they're just annoying. Second, though, I would put uh, command ships right on top of that second list simply because of the effect that they can have on a, on a fleet. So which is better, the, uh, the fleet command ships or the tech trees? Uh, fleet command. Tech threes can give a better boost, but T threes um, uh, they tend to be soft, and you can only put one link on it without having to seriously nerf the rest of the ship. 
Um, PDP asks, Fleet Command ships, how many warfare links to run in PVP? Five links in incursions of the Claymore. Generally, I'd only run three. Um, especially if your fleet's in a good hierarchical formation and you're running enough command ships to, to basically do the overrun, you won't need all five links. You'll only need the three that your ship's good for because another ship's going to make up the slack for what you've got. If you have to make that choice, um, running five links seriously nerfs your defense simply because you have to give up medium slots in order to use the command processors. I would highly recommend that you just keep it down to three and put as big a tank on them as possible, especially in PvP. Hey, any more questions? Awesome. Awesome. Well, I hope you've learned quite a bit on the on the class today. Um, we are a little bit now over time instead of under time. So if you have any further questions, please go ahead and post them up. Otherwise, uh, class is dismissed. Thank you all for attending. Um, as far as a 102, um, a 102 would be what precisely? Just discussing fittings? Um, Milgren, I will definitely let you know if we post a, post a, a, a carrier's class. Um, fittings and tactics, sure. I can, I can probably start developing something like that. I'm already developing a large course study right now, so it could be a while. Um, but it's it's a possibility. All right. Well, um, I wish you all a good day. I've got to be uh, moving on. Uh, like, well, Stone Gunning, here's the problem. You, you, how to actually fly the things they talk about... Um, is it's situational at best. I mean, I can give you some situations and throw out some strategies that I would use, but my strategies aren't necessarily your strategies, especially in a game as wide uh, as wide of options as Eve is. Um, posting fittings, posting tactics and techniques are all, a mem- are all part of essentially fleet leadership and squadron leadership more than just flying a ship. You want to learn how to fly a command ship um, I've taught you how to get into one and how to make it survivable. Uh, learning your own techniques and strategies is most is the most effective method. I can teach you what I know, but that doesn't mean it's going to work for you. Correct. I, I, I can provide a baseline. That's that's understandable. All right. Well, I've got to get going. So all of you have a great day. And uh, take care. I hope you learned a lot about command ships. And if you decide that a command ship is in your future, um, you know, send me a text and, or a message and let me know. I'll, uh, I'll try to help you along the way. In the meantime, 